Given that we are now in our 20th anniversary year, um, we've asked um, Jane Byers, whom many of you will know, who's a, a distinguished artist from our community, uh, to just, and now a member of our board, and we're delighted about that, to uh, just offer some reflections on the gallery's first 20 years. So I invite Jane to join me. The Canadian Clay and Glass Gallery opened 20 years ago. And as we gather here tonight in this beautiful, award-winning building, in the midst of a profoundly moving exhibition, War, Light Within, After the Darkness, featuring the work of eight uh, highly esteemed artists, now is indeed an appropriate time to celebrate. The dream to build a Canadian National Gallery to exhibit, promote, and collect contemporary ceramic art began many years ago, actually back in 1936, with the founding of the Canadian Guild of Potters, which later became Ceramists Canada. Through the decades, this dream remained alive, although unfulfilled. In 1981, the death of highly respected potter Ruth Gowdy McKinley, and the wish to honor her memory, inspired a renewed call and concerted effort to finally find a home for ceramic art. Five possible sites across the country were investigated, including Waterloo, and presented to the Ceramics Canada Annual General Meeting in 1982. The city of Waterloo came out as the clear choice, having already committed to providing a site for the future gallery, thanks mostly to the, the great efforts of Waterloo Councillor Doreen Thomas. This site, 31 years ago, was a bleak, mostly empty space in the centre of Uptown Waterloo with a parking lot and a bare-bones, let's say ugly, hockey rink. <laughs> Among the initial directors of this proposed gallery, then referred to as the Waterloo Gallery for Clay, Glass and Enamel Arts, were prominent Waterloo businessmen Larry Marsland and Ann Roberts. Larry Marsland's first task was to create a steering committee to raise uh, the funds to underwrite a feasibility study. The recording secretary of that steering committee was a passionate maker and collector of ceramics, Winifred Schantz. And so began the nine long, sometimes difficult years of planning and fundraising and fundraising and planning and planning and fundraising. And so too began the formidable team of Ann Roberts and Wynne Shantz, two gals you do not say no to, who through the delays, triumphs, setbacks, and disappointments never faltered in their vision, gathering hundreds of volunteers, supporters, and major patrons to build this gallery, including Donald and Pamela Bierstock, Douglas Wright, Lyle Hallman, John and, and Joyce Pollock, Peter and Betty Sims. Pat Cow Architects won the competition for the building in 1986. Various economic and political upheavals necessitated new plans, revising of those plans, and the revising of the revisions. Construction did not start until 1991. The gallery officially opened in June of 1993. In 1997, Pat Cow Architects won the Governor General's Medal in Architecture for the Canadian Clay and Glass Gallery building. The gallery has developed close to 200 exhibitions involving over 2,000 artists from across Canada and internationally. Curator Christian Bernard Singer's innovative programming has placed the Canadian Clay and Glass Gallery at the forefront of contemporary art exhibitions that push the conceptual and material boundaries of ceramic and glass. The education program led by Sheila McMath introduces thousands of people every year, from children to seniors, to the joys and rewards of creative work. In 2013 alone, over 4,000 students attended the gallery's education programs, a portion of which are offered in French. The gallery has also developed an innovative educational partnership with the University of Waterloo Fine Arts Program. Art in Context gives fine arts students hands-on experience in the gallery world, helping a number of them to go on to employment in various arts organizations. The Winifred Schantz Award for Ceramics and the RBC Glass Award 
have given out $163,000 so far to emerging artists for the chance to travel, to study uh, and do independent research and they've gone to places such as Germany, China, Denmark, Italy, Spain, Japan, Greece and India. The Canadian Clay and Glass Gallery has become an integral, substantial, essential part of the culture of the City of Waterloo, the region and beyond. A tremendous amount has been achieved, but the gallery as a building and as an institution remains a work in progress. There is still much to be done. As we celebrate the past 20 years, let's remember and acknowledge the tenacity the courage and the vision that was required Van Roberts, Wynne Schantz, and so many others to build this vibrant, meaningful, beautiful place. Let's aim to be worthy of the legacy that they have left us as we go forward into the next 20 years and beyond. Thank you. <laughs>